Our Story Productions presents On the Road to Our Story, featuring a variety of programs that take a closer look at the organizations, businesses, and people located in the small communities of the Midwest. So get ready, for you're about to travel On the Road to Our Story. Hello, I'm Jason Howland. Welcome to Speaking of Health, a place to help you learn how to live a longer and healthier life. Experiencing occasional anxiety is a normal part of life, but for people with anxiety disorders, intense, excessive feelings of fear, worry, terror, or panic can affect their quality of life. Whatever form of anxiety you have, treatment can help. Our guest today is Dr. Umesh Vyas. He is a psychiatrist and sleep medicine specialist at Mayo Clinic Health System. Dr. Vyas, thanks for joining us today. You are welcome, Jason. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, let's start out by defining what exactly is anxiety and, and what is an anxiety disorder? Anxiety is a characterized by anxious thoughts, physical sensations, and behaviors caused by perception of a threat. A threat can be obvious, such as upcoming public speaking. You need to give a speech in front of your boss or in your department. Or fear can be a physically assaulted again, because you had one incident in the past and now you had another, and that's an obvious threat. Everyone experiences anxiety. Anxiety is a, a normal, a healthy process and I can give a couple example when you uh, about to cross the road you look both side just to make sure that I'm okay no traffic is coming in and it's a safe to do so why because you have a fear that if I will not look around I might get hit and this can be unsafe so this is a normal anxiety the anxiety disorder is a disorder where anxiety is overwhelming, it is excessive, and excessive to the point where it starts impacting or affecting your quality of life in one or another way. So for example, I am afraid of heights. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean I have an anxiety disorder. When it comes to heights, it just means that uh, I may be anxious or have anxiety when it comes to heights. But when it starts um, uh, affecting where I don't want to go up tall buildings or it affects my quality of life, you're yes. saying that is a disorder. Though. Yes, absolutely. As long as you are functional. So you, if you get a job on a 17th floor in Manhattan, and if you, as long as you take elevator every day and you go up a stair and you perform your duties, uh, this is a normal anxiety. Same thing, I can give you another example. If somebody has a germophobia, it is normal to wash your hand before uh, your meal time, mm -hmm. but uh, it is not okay to keep washing hand over and over. You already washed twice, and now you again go there and wash one more time, just to make sure that there is no no uh, germs left on your hand, and it starts uh, affecting your uh, skin because of your overuse of uh, soap and water. So uh, we talked about a couple of phobias right there, so germophobia and also the fear of heights. Um, I know there are many, many anxiety disorders. So um, can you give some examples of some of the most common anxiety disorders that uh, you help patients with? One is a generalized anxiety disorder. Generalized anxiety disorder is a type of the disorder where basically patient has uh, anxiety, a fear for anything, everything their life in general, health, work, family, house, transportation, anything, everything they are basically worried about. Mm -hmm. So that's a generalized anxiety disorder. Another disorder is obsessive compulsive disorder where person has an obsession. And I can give you an example, keeping everything in order. That's a kind of an obsession. They put everything in order and a little one millimeter something on this side or this side is not okay to them and they just to keep putting everything in order over and over because of the obsession they have to have some compulsion so if somebody has a, 
a fear of uh, contamination. If they don't wash their hand, they have intense anxiety inside. To ward off that anxiety, they have to go and wash their hand or they have to take a shower and they may be taking uh, 20 times a shower in a day. Which is so, not normal. Which is again not normal. Right. So someone who has obsessive compulsive disorder, typically what happens is that they have uh, some obsession. Obsession causes uh, anxiety and to ward off that anxiety, they have uh, some compulsion. And then once they do the compulsion, the obsession, the anxiety goes down, but that does not, it stays like that. And again, they build another, you know, anxiety, they have obsession and they have a compulsion. The panic disorder is a disorder where they have an intense excessive anxiety like an attack. It comes in few seconds, stays for a few minutes, and it is like a impending doom, kind of a fear of, you know, the dying kind of a situation. And that's what m many people call panic attack. Panic attack, exactly. Then another disorder is called post-traumatic st stress disorder, where person either have had or they have witnessed having some disaster. It might be a natural disaster or accident or some traumatic event. I'll, I'll just give you an example. Someone who was a part of World War II, they don't want to watch a movie with the war situation. That's called avoidance. They have intrusive thoughts of those uh, uh, incidences. Basically, they live in the, that situation. They may have a nightmare in the sleep. They are basically visualizing the, exactly what has happened during the actual event of a trauma. Another disorder is a social phobia, where patient has an extreme anxiety to face with the social situation. And because of that, they basically avoid the social situation. They don't want to go to the parties. They don't want to go outside in a social situation because they have a fear of embarrassment and rejection. Another phobia is a specific phobia, like having a little fear of a dog, snake, or a spider is normal. But just by looking at a picture of a snake and you are afraid, that's not normal. So there are m many uh, specific phobias, phobia towards blood, phobia towards injection, uh, height, uh, closed space, that is called claustrophobia. So these are the, some of the examples of uh, specific phobia. There is a, another disorder called anxiety, uh, separation anxiety, which is very typical in young children. They, they basically have uh, anxiety symptoms because of uh, the fear of uh, separation from the parents. So let's, uh, let's talk about uh, symptoms. So what are some uh, common symptoms of uh, anxiety disorders and are there common symptoms? Yes, there are, there are some of the symptoms are very common, like uh, having a fear for anything, everything, shortness of breath, sweating, trembling, shaking, rapid heart, chest discomfort, feeling of like a choking or smothering, tingling sensation, dizziness, uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fear of losing a mind, dying or fainting, sense of unreality, sense of impending doom. Dr. Vias, do we know what is the primary cause of uh, anxiety disorders? Well, the exact cause of anxiety is not fully understood. There are several theories. There are several risk factors who may cause or may uh, put someone at a little higher risk than others. One is uh, biochemical theory. Basically, it is because of uh, some chemical imbalance in the brain. Some of the uh, biochemicals like uh, serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine, then the second theory is called learned theory. If somebody is exposed to an assault at a younger age or any age, there is a little risk that they may have some anxiety disorder because of that traumatic event. So when should someone seek help, medical help, for uh, anxiety? The bottom line for 
anxiety disorder is a patient should seek help anytime when they start realizing that it is affecting their quality of life. Any patient who is experiencing anxiety may benefit from their medical evaluation. Anxiety does not mean that they have anxiety because of a psychiatric reason. Patient who has a mitral wall prolapse, they may feel some uh, shortness of breath and some chest discomfort or somebody who has uh, some respiratory problem or other medical problem. Before somebody given a diagnosis of psychiatric disorder, they do need some medical evaluation just to make sure that they don't have underlying medical reason which is untreated, not diagnosed. Uh, so so that the, the treatment or I would say the evaluation starts from there and then if nothing is found, then the next step is the psychiatric evaluation. Mood disorders and anxiety disorders, they are kind of, they go hand by hand. So it is very common for these patients to have some symptoms of depression. They may develop suicidal thoughts and ideations just because they are so frustrated and they don't know what to do or somebody may start using substances such as alcohol, street drugs, or they may start using some type of the medications which typically we use uh, for the treatment, but they are addicting and they start using more than they should be using. These are some of the indications that they might be dealing with the anxiety and uh, they are using it more than they should be because to treat their anxiety. And when you say affects their quality of life, so that means they're not able to uh, function well at work, at home, at school, um, they may not sleep well, those types of things, right? Uh, exactly. Just I'll just give you an example. Somebody is driving on a bridge. Bridge collapsed. I'm not saying that they were part of it. They were just about to enter on a bridge. They witnessed everything and they develop in a panic attack. Now this person is afraid to the point that does not want to get into the car, does not want to get out of the house, and they are basically, or, or that person is pretty much homebound mm -hmm. because of the, the, the attack they had at that time because of what they witnessed. So as a psychiatrist, uh, how do you help folks in the treatment of anxiety disorders? In psychiatry, the treatment plan is a biopsychosocial model, where bio is use of medications or pharmacological intervention. Psycho is basically a psychotherapy, and the social part is some social situation. The treatment plan in psychiatry is multidisciplinary where the psychiatrist, therapist, and social worker, they basically put together and make a treatment plan. In event of uh, somebody who has anxiety disorder, they may need uh, some medication management. As far as a different type of the therapies is concerned, cognitive behavioral therapy, relaxation therapy, exposure response prevention therapy, flooding, desensitization therapy, these are the some of the type of the therapy we use. It all depends on the type of the disorder. I can give you a little example. Somebody who had a panic attack does not want to go out and they became a homebound. What would be the best therapy for that patient? Maybe desensitization. First day, they just open the front door, look outside, come back, they may have an intense anxiety to deal with even just opening a door and looking outside. Maybe after two days of practicing that, may be able to go two steps outside their house. Maybe after that, five steps outside the house. Maybe the next step is just walking around their house, make a one round, come back. The point I'm trying to make is that it's like a gradual process. You are basically desensitizing yourself to the situation and making a little progress at a time. 
Fantastic. Well, unfortunately, we're all out of time, but I'd like to thank our guest today, Dr. Umesh Vyas, Mayo Clinic Health System Psychiatrist, for joining us today on Speaking of Health. Thank, thank, you, thank you, sir. Much. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone, and be healthy. Our Story Productions presents the Cockover Morning Show, where we weed out the big stories from throughout Sweet Swine County with... Bobby Ray and Sally Sue! Good morning and welcome to the Cockleboro Morning Show. I'm Sergio Ferleone and joining me as always is the ever lovely Cassidy Davis. Aw, thank you Sergio. Okay. It is so much fun to be back here again guest hosting. We are, we are some fantastic guest hosts oh too, gosh. aren't we? I love being a guest host, especially here. It is such a great place to be. It oh, is. You never know what's going to happen. There's always some kind of excitement. Yep. And the folks really do enjoy a lot of excitement during our show. You know, that kind of reminds me. Last yeah. time we were here. It was a little difficult towards the end, wasn't it? It was a little bit too much excitement. Yeah. I mean, it was on a level that was almost traumatic. Well, I've been to counseling. I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, folks. It was... Remind them what happened. I just, I'm having well, a moment. Well, folks, if, if you don't all remember, last time that <clears throat> Cassidy Davis and I guest hosted the show, we had a surprise drop-in, yes. so to say, and it was, of course, Bobby Ray and Sally. Oh, gosh. Uh -huh. I just love them. Yeah, they are great, so aren't awesome they? awesome to see them. They're great. They kind of dropped a little bombshell on they us. They did. And they what did. was that bombshell? They left us for the O Network. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. I was their biggest fan. You know I was their biggest fan. Everybody know. knows. I wrote them fan letters. Yes, you did. I had, I made p paintings. I had a mural in my house. I had little action figures. And I, think, I would play I think you had the full Sally Sue t-shirt too, oh, didn't you? Oh, yes. I know. Yeah. Yes, I had a whole replica of her wardrobe. Yep. I could I start around and do my Sally Sue. It was just, I, I I'm going to. All right, Cassidy. I, Cassidy, I, you, need to, you need to start calming down here. I know. Hey, what's going I on know. here? I'm sorry. Oh, my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, it's the owner of KLUK TV, Cousin John. Oh, wow. So, Cousin John, what do we owe this pleasure to? Well, first of all, I wanted to, to drop off. You know, my, my mother brought me up right. I never come empty-handed, so there's oh, a nice, little, that's nice nice. little fruit plate that's for nice. you. Is that a mango? That looks but really nice. But I did come with some... I don't know if you'd call it earth-shaking or not, but I do have some news for you. Good. We love news. That's what we're all well, about that's here. That's what we're here for. That's good news. I just need to have you both know that this is the very last time that you will be co-hosting this show. I can't do this anymore. I can't take any because, more shells. I just take cannot. Take because <laughs> I've decided to make you the permanent hosts of the show. Oh, my goodness. Go, Cassidy. Oh, Go I Cassidy. tell you, we Go had uh, people sent in some, some awesome, absolutely awesome audition tapes yeah you know for the yeah. openers and that oh yeah yes but after looking through them and i saw you guys uh what you put through i thought it was it was pretty good I don't then i looked at what you'd do it good. for and i decided hey this is the way that that makes the most financial sense and so she did a salary well i, Wait, I would did think, you do that i did not i i was i, Sergio, I think we still well the numbers on there the numbers on there is what i'm going to pay you so that's that's what you're getting so now well, <laughs> I'm sure what you... What about everything on the set? Well, no, the, the, the set stays. I, I own this stuff. I've got tens and tens of dollars invested in so it's not some of this but stuff. But it is Grandma's stuff. No, this is my stuff. In fact, he this was my toy when I was a little boy. Right here. I knew I brought that chicken from home. I, I told thought, him. I, I told thought, him. Yeah. I thought oh, you said that's this fine. kind of smelled like now, Bobby now, Ray Grandma's. I, I do need to ask you guys something. Now, this sure. is this is an interview show, right? Yeah, it is. Definitely. It is. And so uh, I'm pulling executive rank now, and I, I guess I'm going to be your guest today. Oh. So uh, kind of like a trial run type of thing. Yeah, huh? pretty much. But See, you've already so been I'll hired, so don't it. worry about that. But I'm sure you're not prepared. Well, no. So not exactly. here's 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 some some questions you can ask ask me. So. Oh, you brought your own questions. Sure. Huh. See if you can make that work for you. Well, I, th I think we can. I think we can run with this, Cassidy. Don't you? Okay. 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 Yes. I mean, I mean, we are we are professionals. We are. We, can we are. And and I know you just didn't come here just to congratulate Cassidy. And no, I. that was that was part of it. But but uh, I need to tell uh, the people out there a little bit more about what's going on with my TV station. So, cousin John. Yes. Where do you see KLUK TV going from here? Oh, you know, I'm glad you asked that. We have a new deal that we just forged 
with Our Story Productions. Ooh. Okay. Okay, you know, and all the, all the TV shows that we do here at my station, KLUK TV, were, are now going to be broadcast and distributed by Our Story Productions all across wow. the upper Midwest. In fact, cool now don't get nervous about this. But right now, as you and I are here talking into these cameras, we're available to be watched in 1.4 million households every week. Gosh, that is just amazing. Isn't that awesome? 1.4 million. That and is a lot. Sharing we're doing nothing stories. but grow. It's coming along really wow. great. Wow. That is so exciting. Wow. So are we still going to be doing stories about people inside of Sweet Swine County? Well, you know, we, we started out that way. We wanted to do some of the special events and the neat little things and the points of interest inside, you know, mm -hmm. what's going on inside Sweet Swine County. But then once we got our reporters out outside Sweet Swine County, we found out there's a whole lot more stuff going on out there oh, yeah. than there is going here. Yeah. So we're yeah, expanding like that even further. We're going stuff. further and further out all the sure. time. In fact, right now, uh, you know, between the promos that we do on our shows mm -hmm. and what our story production does on their website, we're featuring over 140 towns small town living at its best wow in the upper midwest and it's just growing every week oh it has been so fun to visit some of those towns or you should try it yeah there well, are so many well, of us yeah. best wolf fanatics and everybody else out there and all those other great shows tell us about some of the other great oh shows. yeah you know we've got of course we've got this show which is the number one morning show on KLUK tv has been for many years so don't don't get too nervous oh. about that but i expect you oh. No. To keep that, no. those ratings up, I think I think we will. It, it's probably safe to say that we will be the new All darling. Right. And then we've got Sweet Swine we have. I think, uh, I think it's we, safe. Safe. we also yeah. have the women of Sweet Swine County. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what those ladies are bringing in some viewership too. Yeah. And then we've got uh, well, probably our one of our uh, top shows is uh, you know Split Hoof tonight. Split Hoof tonight. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You know that host, yeah. he's really got something going yeah. on there. You oh, know? and yeah. Earl, isn't he such a nice guy? He he Earl's really good. And and then I do the cornerstone of. KLUK TV is our ongoing soap opera as the corn grows. Mm -hmm. Ah, of we course. have fans we across no. the world. But like worldwide? Worldwide like fans. In other countries. We have fans in other countries. They write in, they they email so they in. Translate it into these different languages. No, it's just in just in English, but we're we're really? real popular in the English speaking parts of Eastern Europe. Wow. So wow. I mean it's it's really, really great. And, uh, and so, you know, the, and the great thing about that is, is that that's my big money maker is, is as the corn grows. You know, I've got over 50 people there, but that's our sweet swine residents and they're all do it volunteer. I noticed on your, on your list of questions here, you didn't, you didn't have anything written, no questions about, about the books that have been written about you. I've heard. Oh. that there is a couple of blockbuster books that have been written about there you. There are, I have my copy right here. Folks living and loving in Sweet oh, Swine yeah. County, love stories from the prairie. <gasps> Read it. Oh, I tell you that that's Read it. I like that a lot. That that follows mm. the burgeoning romance between Aunt Minnie and myself, you know, and it's oh. it's led up to which, you know, it's no secret. We are engaged now and gonna be married. Wow. So that's How gonna be the social event that? of the summer. Beautiful. Around here. It will be. It's and, gonna be a uh, summer wedding? Yes. Wow, that's and, gonna be uh, great. Yeah, it, it's followed along a lot of things there, and and very done very well by the writer, and sensitively done, and sure. And it shows the human like side of a romantic of guy. People well, would maybe not don't tell know anybody. That. It's kind of a secret, though. You know, try to oh. keep the point. That, I was wondering maybe if you could you could tell us about this one here, the Confessions of a Chicken Farmer. Mm, well, now you can that throw one. that crap away. What? Oh. I tell you what, that there is so much libelous stuff written in that thing. Bye. Bye. Well, Norma. Norma herself. I think, I think there's, there's a, a picture of her on the back. I can tell you what, there's a uh, lot of yes, jealousy yes. hanging onto the pen of that writer right there. there wow. There's so a lot of inaccuracies there. Out. Talk about secrets we didn't know. Well, secrets you shouldn't know because they're they're not really real. So. Oh. It's and not boy. one to read the kids, folks. Yeah, I tell you what. Yeah, you probably don't want to. Yeah, don't forget, this is a family show. And it is. Yeah. I am your boss, too, so let's just drop yes, that. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So you know what we should do? Probably should go and see another report. Why don't yeah. we do that? I'm up for it. Let's okay. go. Hi, I'm Charles Cornrault, and you probably know me from the TV show Tuesday Afternoon. Well, enough about me. Join my fellow celebrities as we take a look at small town living at its best. 
In the county of Martin, the town of Fairmont, Minnesota, you will find Our Story Productions. In 2007, Jeff and Denise Rouse had a goal to produce a television program that would highlight the businesses, organizations, events, and people of their community. After hiring a local production company and recruiting friends and community members to volunteer, they began one of the most unique programs on TV. Because of their unique and, dare we say, corny programming, the show gained popularity. With their popularity, other communities began to contact them to see if they could become part of the Our Story family. New programs were added, additional volunteers were recruited, the Our Story team discovered some of the best stories were coming out of some of the smallest towns. So the decision was made to feature as many of the small towns as possible, no matter how small. They believe that every town has a story, and they all need to be told. Today, with staff that included over 60 volunteers, the television show Our Story, Small Town Living at Its Best, spotlights over 225 small communities in four states and has told over 1,500 stories about the communities in the upper Midwest. Each show is aired in over 1 million households on cable television, as well as on their website, YouTube, and Facebook, and yes, even Pinterest. Our Story Productions continues to receive requests to join Our Story family and welcomes communities to email them to have their businesses, organizations, events, or people featured. Our Story Productions is proud to be sharing the lifestyle that we share in the small towns of the upper Midwest, for it's not just the past, but the present that becomes Our Story. And, and Cousin John, we, we really have to thank you for coming. Yes. And, oh, that's and no problem. It's Grace my pleasure. And With your the fruit. Oh, yes. Yeah, I enjoy and, the fruit. You know, yeah. and talking about the books. You know, and, and, and I yeah. tell you what, and after seeing your audition tape, you know, I know uh -huh. we talked about that and stuff, we got a little surprise for you. What's oh. that? Another I'm one? thinking, folks, I'm going to let you see that tape <gasps> right now. Lewis, oh. hit it. <laughs> Welcome to the Taco Brew Morning Show. I'm Cassidy Davis, here with my charming co-host, Sergio Ferleone. It's a pleasure, my dear. How are you doing this morning? I am doing great. How are you? Not too bad. So how's your week been? Oh, well, it's actually been a bit of a stressful week. Oh, really? What's going yeah. on? Well, ever since the last taping of Split Hoof Tonight, Apparently there was some big brouhaha over you that You don't even have to tell me. I was there. Uh, I was there. Well, it was completely awful. It was chaos. Well, ever mean? since that taping, there's been a steady stream of KLUK employees marching right to my office. Well, you are the creative director. And Mr. Olson ordered everybody to come see you for their yeah. festival assignments. So yeah. that's probably why. But... I understand. I understand. But first through the door was Ronnie P. Silage. Mm, Ronnie. Talking about some type of labor dispute or something like right. that. Oh. And then after that, Prairie Ann comes in, talking about how she's not going to work with the superstar, and I assume that's you. Oh, I don't know. And that pretty boy, Earl Silo. Oh, no. I mean, really, Earl yeah, Silo. Woman. She she is completely ridiculous. First of all, she's full of herself. Second of all, she walks around like she owns KLUK. Mm -hmm. I, can't work with me, really. Oh, Just, I, I understand. She's. Well, high maintenance, you know, but yeah. I no sooner got her calmed down. Understand. And oh, and then Earl comes walking in, and he wants all the premier assignments. Did you give them to him? Of or? course not, because they're all premium assignments. Well, hey, folks, you can see why I couldn't resist when I saw that. That's why they're the hopes. Yeah. Oh, and it was so much fun to make. I was could not it? get over it. Yes, we had a blast. We did. We it, called Clem down at the feed store because we wanted our pictures right away, and he is the only person right. in the entire county right. who had an Instamatic camera. So and we like, come on down, get the pictures. And we needed at least 12 of them, didn't we? Well, you, we had to make every shot count right. because you only get the 12. That's right. That's those those Polaroids, that's all the further they go. Right. Yeah. Well, folks, I'm afraid we're about out of time. Already? Except for one thing. I have one more thing. You know, folks, I know these two kids are really proud of that audition tape. I kind of liked it, and I'm sure you did too. So here's what we're going to do. From today on, that's going to be the official show opener from now on. Wow. Now we can say our goodbyes. And thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me come in and do stuff. Well, and we thanks for doing it. your co-hosting. And I'm looking forward to a lot of years of you two sitting here right behind this table. Oh, wow. Nice okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for the Cockleburn Morning Show, where we weed out the big stories throughout Sweet Swain County and beyond. We'll see you next time.
Well, there you have it, folks. Thanks for joining us as we travel on the road to our story. Thank you.